Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are doing good. So I was just free and I thought maybe I will uh, upload a video on a solution to another problem in the September challenge. So this problem is called intersection of two arrays. Let us read the problem. It is quite uh, easy, but it has been asked many times. And one of my friend got this question in his interview very recently. It's a pretty easy question, but if they increase the constraints, if they make it more strict, then you need to know which method to apply. So let us first read the problem. Given two integer arrays, num1, num2, return an array of their intersection. Each element in the array must be as many times as it shows in both the arrays. And we can print the result in any order. So basically, understanding the problem is not a very difficult task. Suppose we have this array. OK, this is one array. And this is another array. If we observe here, two and two. So two will occur two times. So in our answer array, we should result, uh, we should print, uh, sorry, we should return this. We should uh, return to two. For example, if there is another uh, array like this. So consider the arrays are like this. Okay. It is not necessary. Both of them have to be equal. So what will you then return? You will see, okay, two occurs once here and it occurs two times here. So you will take only one, two, three occurs two times here and one time here, but you will take only one. Actually two occurs three times here, but two occurs one here only. So you will take two only once. Is there anything else? I don't think so. So like this, we have to, uh, you know, this is how we uh, get the answer. But what is the algorithm now? So first method is we can make use of map. What we'll do? We will store all the elements of uh, first array in the map. We will find the frequency of each of the elements of the first array. And in the second array, what we will do, whenever we find out that an element in the second array occurs in the map, then we will store that element in our answer array. We will make a vector called answer. Okay, we will then store that element which appears in the map. And now we are traversing the second array, not the first. First array we traverse only to get the elements and store it in the map. The second array we traverse and check if that element is there in the map. If it is there, we'll store it in the answer and we'll decrease the count of that uh, element. So if this is array two, this is array one, then array two of I will decrease the count if array two of I is present in the map. And once uh, the count reaches to zero, that means if the frequency of this element becomes zero, we need to erase it from the map. Why are we erasing from the map? Because then we will only uh, store those elements which uh, occur in both the arrays. We'll get the intersection only. We will not be taking all the elements. If we don't do this, if we don't erase from the, erase from the map, we'll be taking all the occurrences of the element. We'll be getting union then. We will not be getting intersection. That is why when the frequency of an element in the map reaches zero, we have to erase it from the map. So this is first method, store it in the map. That is first method. Now, second method, which is more interesting is we can sort it. So what happens if, okay, let me sort this array. So this array is already sorted actually. And now if I sort this, so I'm doing sorting now. And if I sort this also, it is going to be two, 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 three, five, six. Okay, now I'll use a two pointer method. What is two pointer method? Basically, 
I'll take a pointer which will be pointing on the first index uh, of the first array and similarly first index of the second array. So let it be I and let it be J. Now I'll check if array one of I is equal to array two of J. Is it equal? No. What is the condition? In this case, uh, array one of i is less than array two of j. In that case, what I will do, I will move my i pointer. I will do i plus plus. I will move my i to next location. Why am I doing this? Because see, we want the condition when both the elements of the arrays are equal, then we can say that, okay, it occurs in both the arrays. It is an intersection. We will store that in our answer vector. But if suppose uh, the elements of the two arrays are unequal, then we will move that pointer to which is, uh, you know, uh, less, uh, basically lesser value, whichever uh, element has lesser value, that pointer we will move so that it will uh, reach. Uh, actually, this is done to reach the higher value. That means C. Now array one of I is equal to one and array two of J is equal to two. One is less than two. Okay. So that is why I'll move my I pointer so that because the elements of the array are sorted, I may end up getting a bigger number than one, which may be two. Then I can say, okay, two occurs in both arrays. I'll get intersection. That's what I meant. So what, what if it was the other case? We'll let us see now. We'll go, okay, now we'll traverse again. So now two is equal to two. Array one of i is equal to array two of j. So in our answer vector, we will store two. Now what we should do, we should move both the pointers. When we got an intersection, we'll move both the pointers. So now j will be here and i will go here. Both the pointers have moved. Now see. Now what happens array one of I, which is three and array two of J, which is two, three is greater than two. So now which pointer should I move? I'll move J pointer. Why are we doing this? Because we are hoping that we can get a number which is closer to the bigger of these two numbers. So that's to get an intersection. So now I'll move my J. But when I move my J, the same thing happens. So again, I'll move my J. Now see, array two of J will become three and array one of I is three. So three is equal to three. So another element I got like this, I'll keep moving until when should I do until I is less than array one size. The first pointer should not reach the end of uh, this thing. Uh, array one. As well as second pointer, it should not go outside array two. So while this, so this two pointer method with sorting will work. Now, if you use math method, you will take O of n space most likely, but O of n time also. But in sorting method, you will take n log n time and O of one space. So if the constraint was 10 power five, that is number of elements n 10 power five or anything, then go for sorting. Otherwise you can go for brute force only actually. In this problem, especially this problem, you can do brute force, but I discussed, uh, I'm uh, this thing, I discussed two pointer method because if the constraint was very large, then you will have to uh, apply different algorithm. So that is this method. So that is what I have tried to show in here. See, using map, you can do the same thing, whatever I have explained. That is very easy solution. I think most of you would have understood, but the solution that uh, you can use if the constraints are much tricky is sorting, sort both the arrays, keep two pointers and uh, keep moving the pointers whenever uh, keep moving the pointers to find uh, an intersection. If array one has lesser element, move array one pointer. If array two has lesser element, uh, then move array two pointer. If both the values are same, both move both the pointers. And of course, we need to store it in a answer array. 
store those intersection elements in answer array. So link of the answer will be in the description. Solution will be in the description. You can check it out. Both the methods are there. Pretty straightforward, simple problem, but I thought maybe second method, uh, some of you may not know, and it may help you if the constraints are very large. So that's all for this video. If you like it, hit the like button. And please share it with your friends, just challenge them and uh, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't, it will really motivate me until the next videos. Take care, stay safe, keep learning, keep growing, stay tuned. Bye.